Hey, what's up? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy, and in this video, we're going to see a review of this beautiful book, Elementary Principles on Chemical Processes, Felder and Rousseau. I got the second edition, but I think I used the third edition when I was studying. Some details, this one is the, yeah, here, second edition. And we're going to see what's in this book and what's good, what's bad, some tips, and yeah, essentially is everything, guys. So the first thing, it's the index. In the index, you can find all the content. There are 14 chapters in which uh, chapter four, chapter five, six, and 11. Actually, 11, we just see a small part because it's a mixture between energy and mass balance, and we just want to study right now the mass balance part. Uh, yeah, there are actually chapter one, two, and three. Which if I were a teacher, I would be always recommending my students to read those before the first two weeks of the course. The first chapter is about chemical engineering. What do chemical engineers do? Actually, is about two, only two pages, which is nothing. You can read it in, I think, 20 minutes. And you will get a overall glance of what is chemical engineering and what's going to be the course about. The second chapter is about calculations, dimensions, how to change stuff, how to calculate system, international system to English system, area, all that, all that that you should, in theory, know by now. But as I tell you, if I were a teacher, I would recommend my students to read that, practice, be ready for class. Processes, processes and variables, I think that's important one. Process, what's a chemical process? What's a process variable? What's a state variable? Pressure, volume, temperature, compositions, mole fractions, whatever. All those stuff that you should already be a little bit familiar with, we're going to see that. That's about part one. Part two, which is essentially the main part of mass balance, which we're going to be studying. Uh, it's chapter 4, 5, and 6. Chapter 4 is the introduction and fundamentals on mass balance. You know, guys, it's about introducing you the equation, the master equation of mass balance, which is inlet minus outlet plus the production minus the consumption. It's going to give you the accumulation of the system. Uh, yeah, we study each component, when to use an inlet, when to use the outlet, when do we use production and consumption, and what the hell is accumulation, which I think is one of the most uh, difficult concepts to understand and to apply. After that, you're going to see mass balancing one unit, two units, many units, recycle, bypass, atomic mass balances, uh, molecular balances, purge, with reaction or reaction, uh, equilibrium. I think we end with uh, combustion. That's the first block, which I actually call it in the course block number one, MB1. And I think it's the most important part of the course, so if you do not understand or don't get that part, please don't jump it. You, it's not like, it's like mathematics. Once you do one stuff, you need to know it in order to get to the second part. You cannot uh, jump subtraction if you do not uh, understand it. So if you go to division or multiplication, you're, not, you're going to have a gap. So that's one part, chapter four. And comes chapter five, which is single phase mass balancing. So in theory, we know how to do mass balances. Now we're going to add a little bit more like theory concepts in engineering, which is how to calculate a quantity in a gas. You know it's ideal gas. You know you just need to know pressure, volume, and temperature. You can get the amount of moles, and you know that with moles you change it to mass, and you get mass. Once you got mass, you can do a mass balance. Also going to be about real gases and stuff like that. How to model them, real equation, all those equation of state that we're going to see. Also the C compressibility factor and not only like the theory, we're going to apply those concepts in the mass balances problems. So it's very interesting how to model that. And then comes chapter number six, which is multiple phase uh, mass balancing. I think the theory or like the most science or related physics chemistry concepts are here because we're going to see phases, states of matter, uh, diagrams, temperature versus composition versus pressure, uh, equilibrium, vapor, liquid, 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 solid, liquid. First understand them and then apply them. So I think this is 
a little bit tricky is where many people start having problems, not because they don't know how to do the mass balance, but they don't know how to apply that. So if right now I know that I can relate the vapor pressure to a temperature or backwards. And with a pressure you can relate to a gas and you can get the amount of gas there. Students are like, what do I do with a temperature? How do I transform this temperature concept into a mass quantity so I can use it? So yeah, I think it, it's a little bit hard because it's more about theory, not that much into the application. Once you get the belly, you can just put it in the equations and you need just to solve it. So we're going to see mainly the vapor liquid equilibrium, which is Raoult's law, Henry law, all the stuff. And I think it's very well explained here, at least at the level that you need, because of course you're going to go further in other classes like thermodynamics, equilibrium stuff, physical chemistry, all that. So yeah, essentially that's chapter six. And I think chapter four, five and six are the most like typical parts in a course or mass balance course. You're going to stumble upon that in every course. If I go right now to, I don't know, MIT, I check the course, they're going to have that. If I go to a university, I don't know, in France, I'm going to find that. If I go to a university in Japan, to Mexico, whatever, I'm going to find at least some stuff like that. Introduction to what is energy, because many people think they know, but like engineering or scientifically, they don't actually get the concept of energy. So there's about some theory in energy, some theory on energy balances, and you start doing balances, balancing, balancing. You start doing a balances with no reactions, which is okay, because reactions normally tend to take energy or to give energy. You first do no reaction, then you go to the part where there is a reaction, how to account for that uh, reaction or heat of reaction, how does the temperature goes up or it goes uh, down, decreases, whatever. Chapter 10, which is computer-aided problem solving. We're not going to see that in this course, nor in energy balance. I'm going to uh, do a course about how to use the computer for general engineering problems, general chemical engineering processes. Chapter 11, which is transient state, a uh, mixture between mass balance and energy balances. So I would love to see transient state in mass balances and then transient state in energy balances and then mix them. But this book goes directly to the transient state and supposes that you already know mass balances and you're studying energy balances. So the problem there is that there is not enough material for you to understand it. But I uploaded some classes about transient state. If you really want to learn about transient state in mass balance, you can do it there. Uh, the book is not enough, I think it's just a small fraction of transient state for mass balance in general. If you are studying energy balance, I think it's a good chapter. But if you're only starting with the mass balance, I think it's not enough. So go check out that. I'm going to probably put it here, everywhere, I don't know. And then comes part number four, which is the part in which you analyze some processes. I recommend this just to do a small rating, just to know if you are into chemical engineering, it will be a good idea to get to know uh, the typical processes. Chapter 12 is production of PVC, polyvinyl chloride, very important material. 13 is about steam reforming, also very important in uh, petrochemical plants. And chapter 14 is about scrubbing CO2. Uh, it's SO2, sorry, uh, sulfur dioxide. It's about essentially how do they take out the SO2. And finally it comes Appendix A, which is uh, computer solved uh, problems. Uh, they help you, they show you. I don't like it and as I told you before, I'm going to do a course eventually about how to use software or uh, normal software, Excel or Mathematica, Wolfram, all those stuff, how to use it for chemical processes or chemical engineering problems in real life. So I do not recommend to be going in each course and going to the software part. I recommend having a software course and then having all these problems. How would you do this mass balance? How would you do this process? And then comes uh, Appendix B, which is physical properties just tables or materials you're going to use, temperatures, boiling points, constants, 
But many of that material you can find it in internet, so I don't know. It's it's cool to have it there. It's already print, but I mean it's not a whole new material. If you really want to become good in mass balance, you should get that problem section, get to the premium section, and you got there lots of lots of problems. I think I got about 120, 130. Uh, problems you can check them there are some are like uh, five minutes long I have some videos that are almost one hour long because there are huge problems many units many streams many equations a lot of mathematics so it's totally worth it go and check it out just doing mass balance I think it's a I think it's worth to buy it get it there, probably you're going to use it later. Uh, it's kind of expensive, I think it's around 80 to 100 dollars, uh, but it's totally worth it. If you have the money, I will recommend you to actually buy the book. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.